session. The first speaker is Axel Jungström, and the title is the fourth homotopy group of the three sphere in cubicle Agda. All right, thank you. So I'm going to present some of my PhD thesis work uh, with my supervisor Anders Mertberg, and yeah, it's a formalization of uh, of uh, well, Guillaume Brunry's uh, famous or infamous proof of uh, the fact that pi four of S three is is uh, Z mod two. Um, so this is a synthetic proof in homotopy uh, type theory of, the, of this fact. So it's a pretty cool proof, I think. Uh, and well, it's probably one of the most advanced uh, piece of mathematics that someone has sort of been able to do in HOT. So it's a proof that we're really interested in, right? I mean, Guillaume's PhD thesis was really a, a milestone for the HOT community. But it's not been formalized, and that's quite annoying when we believe in formalization. Um, and that's due to, well, Guillaume kind of ended up in coherence hell at some point of his thesis, and he just sort of pushed this issue aside a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, this issue is kind of what prevented people from, from formalizing this proof for a very long time. Um, so what we've been doing is, well, we've been working in cubicle Agda, and we've tried, kind of tried to work around uh, these coherence, this coherence hell that Guillaume uh, ended up in. So we tried to streamline the proof a little bit. We've tried to, well, we came up with some new definitions of things with, which made the proof easier, and yeah, that's, and we got a proof, um, a formalized proof. Right, um, so obviously Guillaume's PhD thesis is like 200 pages long, and I don't, God knows how long the formalization is. So I'll, I'll, I have 10 minutes, I'll have to give you a brief overview of, of Guillaume's proof, and I'll try, try my best here. I have a lot of silly pictures at least, so hopefully that helps. Uh, Let's hope the animation works here. Okay, so let's start with the, <laughs> this is the nice part of, of his thesis, right? His chapters one to three, they're great. Everything here is kind of smooth and nice, and he was very careful when he wrote this down too. Um, so no one really believed that this would be a problem to formalize. Um, so the idea here is Brunry, he constructs a, a map from, from S3 to S2, um, which I've animated here, uh, using MS Paint and some other tools. Um, <laughs> And uh, <laughs> yeah, so it, for, for, the, for those of you who know, this is a, a whitehead product of well, the generators of pi 2 of S2. Um, it doesn't matter at all what it is, um, right? We can stop looking at this now. Um, this map, which I'm calling the Brunry map, de denoted by a young Brunry, um, it lives in uh, pi 3 of S2. And as some of you may know, there's an equivalence E from pi 3 S2 uh, and the, uh, to the integers. So we can look at what happens when we take the Brunry map and map it into the integers via this equivalence. Let's call the result beta. This is now the famous Brunry number, right? Um, so Brunry's main theorem in chapters one to three is that pi four of S3 uh, is, is Z mod beta. That's great, we're almost there, right? Um, so for this uh, part of the, uh, of the proof, um, we need, well, some stuff. We need something called the James construction. We sort of cheated a bit and proved a special case of it, but later a guy called Kang Rogi uh, uh, proved the full theorem. You need the Hopf vibration, you need the Blaker's Massey theorem, Whitehead products, yada, yada, yada. But you know, it's, it's, it's not easy, but it's doable, okay? Um, so all we need to do now is prove that this number beta is plus or minus two, so and we're done because we have this equivalence, right? Um, but this is not easy. Um, in fact, um, this, is, this is what leads us to, to chapters four uh, to six of, of Guillaume's thesis, which is coherence hell. You know, this is hell, right? And he's ended up in coherence hell. And, and why is this? Well, in order to prove that this beta is plus or minus two, you need a bunch of things. So the first thing you're going to need is smash products. Um, we hate smash products in, in the hot community because they're impossible to reason about. Um, so here, I'm going to throw a lot of diagrams and stuff on you, and you don't need to know what they say. It's just to make it look impressive and like really hard. Um, but you need this sort of uh, symmetric monoidal structure of the smash products in order to, to define something called the cup product, which is a product on cohomology groups, turns them into a ring. And uh, Guillaume did this using smash products. So without smash products, you were stuck already, right? Uh, and well, in addition, we need to have a lot of other results about cohomology 
We're going to need this thing called the Meyer-Vitorio sequence. We're going to need this thing called the Gesin sequence. We're going to need this thing called the Hopf invariant homomorphism. We're going to need this thing called the uh, iterated Hopf construction. You see, that's a great diagram too. Um, and you know, uh, it's yeah. Here's a list of all the stuff we need. We need stuff, and it's fairly advanced stuff. And this is the issue, right? We get stuck already here. We get stuck in the very beginning. Um, so these smash parts are very hard to reason about. So in, in particular, you need to prove this thing called the Pentagon uh, identity. And that's like, you know, you get like, what is it, like 10, no, nine dimensional cubes or something showing up in the proof. You just can't fill these things. So it's just uh, annoying and horrible and no one wants to do it. So our way of attacking this issue was, well, <coughs> the only thing we actually need smash products for will be to define this thing called the cup product. So what if we can define that one directly instead and just throw smash products out of his thesis altogether. And that we did in a, in a previous article together with, with uh, Brunry and, and, and Mottberg. Uh, so we were able to just uh, define it directly and it has a very clear construction. And this construction is very easy to, to, to reason about too. It's much easier to reason about than the, the construction that arises from the smash product. Um, and in fact, all of these other results are sort of results relating to, or at least the Hopf invariant homomorphism and the Gesin sequence are both results relating to and building on the smash, or sorry, on the cup product. So in fact, well, they become easy all of a sudden because this new construction of the, of the cup product well, simplified a lot of things. It's very direct. Um, so we sort of, we, well, we got it. That's what we needed. Um, so, well, what can I say about the actual formalization of this? So we like to work in cubicle agda, right? Because it's great for this type of stuff because things compute. Now, I'm not talking about the fact that univalence computes. I'm just talking about the fact that, <coughs> for example, when you define a map out of a higher inductive type, you get definitional equalities. So when you have these definitional equalities and you have, well, cubicle agda, sorry, when you have, no, that was, not, no, that was my punchline. Uh, when you have a new definition of the cup product and you have cubicle agda, you get a lot of definitional equalities. So a lot of this, these bureaucracies that arise from reasoning about cubes, you know, you have coherence paths and it's just hell. Uh, well, they sort of vanish in cubicle like that because things actually, uh, well, they, they normalize to things that look reasonable. Um, and, you know, when we had this cup product, well, the, the rest of the formalization was, was challenging for sure. It took a, lot, took a lot of time, but it was straightforward, I would say. And Guillaume's proof turned out to be correct. Uh, so we're very happy about that too. Um, so a, a few lines of code later, we have the, the result. 5, 4 of S3 is Z mod 2, uh, completely formalized in, in cubicle agda. Okay, how much time do I have left? Like two minutes? Yeah. Okay, good, perfect. Uh, <laughs> so I said that chapters 4 to 6 were horrible, so this is a little teaser now for, for some future work. They might actually, they, they are not that horrible if you, if you do things differently from, from Guillaume. Um, so Lately, I thought a lot about this fact that it's so hard to prove that this beta is plus or minus two. We should just be able to do it directly, right? Um, and uh, in fact, there is such a proof. You can actually just look at this term beta, try to trace a lot of maps. It's very annoying to look at, but, but it's not that hard. It's very direct and it's formalizable in, in standard hot two. There's nothing cubical about this proof. And we actually get a direct proof uh, uh, of this. So, and this proof gives you a lot of like new definitions of beta on the way. So we can actually look at what happens when we plug one of them into a cubic lag that we normalize. And in fact, this, this beta is, uh, well, it's actually minus two and not two. Uh, so that's, that's funny, of course, but it's not of any mathematical significance, but it's, it's funny. Um, but this is, of course, the topic of a future talk, but if someone is interested, uh, well, you can ask me about it later, or you can look at my there's a little blog post I wrote about this. So let me summarize. We have three formalizations. First, the one I actually came here to talk about, the full formalization of Guillaume's thesis. We have a direct proof of the fact that beta is actually minus two. And this direct proof actually gave us a sort of proof by computation or proof by normalization of the fact that beta is minus two. So we actually have three proofs. Well, the two are sort of the two last ones are sort of the same, but kind of three proofs. Uh, so yeah. Questions? Um, if 
if, if you assume the co coherence laws for the smash products, does the proof get easy afterwards? Um, well, it gets more, um, well, it's not as direct, uh, because, well, if you assume then, mm, I wouldn't say it becomes easier, no. So he still has to prove this this one lemma, or lemma of five point, whatever. Uh, it's um, actually proving basically that, that he needs this lemma, he needs to prove that his definition of the copyright agrees with the one that we came up with now. Uh, so actually he's, he's, he's working quite hard to reduce his stuff to the stuff that we came up with independently later. Um, so I wouldn't say it becomes easier, no. You kind of just need it to bridge, you know, to make the copyright into something that you can actually use. Uh, so. Uh, so thank you. Um, uh, about your direct proof uh, that replaces uh, chapters four to five to, to six, mm -hmm. is it something that uh, a math person could have written, or uh, is it uh, something that you have to understand the intricacies of cubical type theory to get just right? No, no, it's really not cubical at all. It's completely mathsy. Uh, but I, we haven't, we don't know yet if uh, if if. There's like an equivalent version in the old literature, probably there is, you know, the maths people always come up with stuff, but but we haven't found it, so maybe it's a new proof, who knows, that would be cool, but uh, we don't know, uh, of course. Um, we're waiting for what uh, Emily Real says. So. <laughs> <laughs> and just a little follow up, uh, how long does the computation take? Uh, so we, we che I have to say, like, Andres is very excited about this because he loves cubicle like that and he wanted to compute. This is actually cheating quite a bit because we, re we, we rewrite beta a lot before we compute it. And then the computation just takes uh, one second. So, okay. but, but yeah, modular cheating. I, I've got a follow up uh, troll rather than a question. Um, uh, you know that mathematicians uh, shun like anything that like, like computation, like for instance, the four color theorem uh, is, uh, is uh, not a good theorem because yeah. it's proven by computation. <coughs> uh, is, is that just putting uh, like this kind of result in the realm of uh, computer science uh, and away from the horrible grasp of uh, mathematicians? Uh, and I, I think actually, I mean, the reason we have this third proof by computation is because Anders Marfell is my supervisor. I was very happy with the direct proof as it was uh, without the computation part because it's actually equally uh, easy to, to actually just show mathematically that it maps to minus two. Uh, and that was the original proof, actually. And then we realized that we could actually compute something on the way. So I think the maths people should still be able to appreciate <coughs> it. I hope so. OK, so I, I think we should move on to the next talk. Let's thank the speaker.